In this video, we'll talk about Korobov's rifles, which were so cool and unique that at one point they even overshadowed Kalashnikov. How did it happen that rifles that were superior to Kalash in terms of characteristics didn't make it into service? And just how good were they really? If you're curious, watch the video till the end and don't forget to hit the like button. When we talk about Soviet weapon designs, we tend to picture something simple or, given the nature of the USSR, something strict. For example, the Kalashnikov rifle appeared indestructible, rugged and, one might say, cold in appearance. But few know about another weapons designer of that era, who with his futuristic designs was decades ahead of his contemporaries. I'm talking about German Alexandrovich Korobov and his many inventions. The first of his rifles was the TKB-4082, nicknamed Bychok. In 1943, the state set the first competition requirements for a new automatic rifle for the Soviet Army. From this moment, Korobov started working on his first invention. By 1945, the requirements were updated and the future winner Kalashnikov entered the scene. Unfortunately, Korobov's rifle was eliminated because it didn't meet the accuracy standards and only managed 5,000 shots before wearing out. The rifle weighed 4.3 kilograms and had a bullpup design which was innovative at the time. But as we know, people often fear new things. Korobov wasn't too upset and by the end of 1947 had created a new rifle, the TKB-45443 the world's first automatic rifle with a gas-delayed blowback system using 7.62 by 39 cartridges. Korobov understood that competing with Kalashnikov would be difficult if he stuck with the old rifle design. So, he simplified the new rifle to cost half as much and made it incredibly simple in construction. When assembled, the rifle had twice the recoil reduction which improved accuracy, attracting the attention of the Ministry of Defense. However, despite the possibility of perfecting this system, Korobov himself chose to abandon it, switching to a lever-delayed blowback system in his next model, the TKB-4545. This rifle still had half the recoil and half the production cost of Kalashnikov's, plus it weighed half a kilogram less. But in the end, individual parts of the rifle broke over time and the rate of fire was uneven. So despite its advantages, Korobov's rifle was rejected. Finally, the time for triumph came with Korobov's latest development, the TKB-517. In the next competition, this rifle became the AKM's most dangerous competitor, with no previous shortcomings and performance still twice that of Kalashnikov's. After this contest, the state sent Kalashnikov's rifle back for improvements because it couldn't allow another rifle to outperform the already established AKM. However, Korobov's rifle was ultimately rejected with an official letter stating that Korobov's rifle couldn't surpass the Kalashnikov rifle already in production. Essentially, the state admitted that Korobov's rifle was a breakthrough, but since the USSR leadership had its own plans for Kalash, they subtly hinted to Korobov that his rifle should know its place. At this point, Korobov decided to prank his government sponsors since the state was funding his work. If you don't want me to invent great weapons, thought Korobov, then here's my new TKB-022 line. The idea was simple, take something functional with decent characteristics and put it into a body so futuristic that conservative minds of the time would 100% reject it. The new rifle featured curved soft forms, strange bends and, in some versions, deliberately worsened design solutions. For example, the TKB-022PM with its bullpup design, already had complaints about inconvenient magazine changes, so Korobov placed the magazine at the very rear of the stock to make it as uncomfortable as possible for the soldier. Moreover, he designed a shell ejection system so that after firing, the shell wasn't ejected but moved into another barrel above the firing barrel, so after each shot, the mechanics would spit the shell out from where the bullet had just exited. Think about how ridiculous and sarcastic that was or take the laughable TKB-022P model, where the magazine served as the handle. Reloading was impossible without shifting your grip to the body of the rifle. After that, Korobov released several more interesting weapons, though they all tried in some way to resemble the Kalashnikov. Perhaps the designer became obsessed with surpassing Kalashnikov 
since he had once succeeded. So, let's compare one of his rifles to a Kalashnikov from that time and see if all the claims hold up. We'll take the TKB 517, which was unjustly rejected, and compare it to the AK-47, which was adopted around the same time. Starting with weight, Korobov's rifle weighed 2.78 kilograms, while the AK-47 weighed 4.3 kilograms without the magazine. Both rifles used the classic 7.62 by 39 cartridge, with the TKB 517 having a firing rate of 560 rounds per minute, nearly matching the Kalashnikov's 600 rounds. The muzzle velocity was the same for both rifles at about 720 meters per second, but Korobov's rifle had a maximum range of 1 kilometer compared to the AK-47's 800 meters. So overall, the TKB 517 was actually superior to the Kalashnikov of that era, making the decision to stick with the AK-47 rather questionable. However, it wasn't only Korobov who tried to overcome Kalashnikov's creations by choosing an unconventional and futuristic approach. In the mid-1960s, Soviet weapons designer Nikolai Afanasyev embarked on a daring venture that would push the boundaries of firearm innovation. The creation of the TKB-011. This bullpup assault rifle, chambered in 7.62 by 39mm, was nothing short of revolutionary. It featured radical innovations like a tunnel-type ejection system and a compact design that was ahead of its time. But Afanasyev didn't craft this marvel in isolation. He drew heavy inspiration from the groundbreaking work of German Korobov, known for his experimental TKB-408 and TKB-022 rifles. Korobov was a pioneer in exploring bullpup configurations, where the action and magazine are positioned behind the trigger. His innovative design laid the groundwork for Afanasyev's TKB-011, which took these concepts even further. The TKB-011 boasted a muzzle velocity of around 715 meters per second and an effective range of about 500 meters, putting it on par with other assault rifles of its era. One of its most unique features was the tunnel-type ejection port. Spent casings were ejected downward through a funnel making the rifle truly ambidextrous, a significant advantage for left-handed shooters and tactical versatility. Constructed with steel internals encased in a Bakelite exterior, the TKB-011 was both lightweight and innovative. Bakelite, a form of early plastic, was cutting-edge material at the time. However, it raised durability concerns as Bakelite could become brittle under extreme conditions. This skepticism about its long-term reliability was one of the factors that hindered its adoption. The TKB-011 had several advantages. Its compact size made it highly maneuverable, especially in tight quarters. The ambidextrous design and innovative ejection system not only catered to left-handed users, but also helped reduce recoil and improve handling. Weighing less than traditional rifles like the AK-47, it offered greater mobility to soldiers. However, these pros were overshadowed by several cons. The plastic housing was deemed unreliable in the harsh and varied climates of the Soviet Union. Military planners viewed the rifle's unconventional design as too complex and untested for widespread use. Moreover, its rate of fire in burst mode was an astonishing 1,700 rounds per minute, impressive on paper but practically difficult to control potentially leading to wasted ammunition and decreased accuracy. But if you think that the TKB-11 was too much for its time and that the military is always too conservative, let's move a decade ahead where another bullpup brother has actually perfected what the TKB-11 lacked while still being daring and unusual in terms of design. Enter the Steyr AUG, introduced in 1977. Like the TKB-011, the AUG was a bullpup rifle featuring a compact design and ambidextrous capabilities. Both rifles aim to reduce overall length while maintaining barrel length, enhancing maneuverability without compromising firepower. The AUG, however, was constructed from more durable synthetic materials that could withstand harsh conditions, addressing the very durability concerns that plagued the TKB-011. The AUG also featured a modular design allowing for quick barrel changes and easy customization. 
features that the TKB-011 lacked. With a muzzle velocity of 940 meters per second and an effective range of 300 to 500 meters, the AUG matched or exceeded the performance metrics of the TKB-011. The similarities between the two rifles highlight how the TKB-011 was conceptually ahead of its time, envisioning features that would only become standard in later decades. So why was the TKB-011 not adopted while the AUG went on to become one of the most successful bullpup rifles in history? It boils down to timing, materials and military culture. The TKB-011 was introduced during a period when the Soviet Union was conservative in its approach to weaponry. The Kalashnikov series was already deeply entrenched, leaving little room for experimental designs. Additionally, manufacturing techniques and materials science had not yet advanced to the point where synthetic materials could be both durable and reliable for military use. The AUG, on the other hand, benefited from being introduced in an era more receptive to innovation. Advances in materials allowed for the use of durable synthetics and extensive field testing proved its reliability. Militaries were beginning to appreciate the advantages of modularity and customization, areas where the AUG excelled. In the end, the TKB-011 remained a prototype, a fascinating glimpse into what could have been. It was a weapon ahead of its time, embodying concepts and features that would only be fully realized and appreciated years later. While it didn't earn a place in the annals of widely adopted firearms, its legacy lives on as a testament to innovation and the relentless pursuit of advancement in small arms design.